Is it recording? Yeah, yeah, right? Oh, uh, okay, ha. Huh. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, usually it's my wife and my daughter that start this, this videos and, and actually I, I really prefer they are much better than myself. Uh, but today, um, that responsibility is mine. Uh, we are going to talk about trust and obedience in God, for sure. And for that purpose, I'm going to use my daughter as a kind of guinea pig. We are going to use to test what happens when you trust and obey and when you do not. Lisa, it's time to ride. Let's ride your bike. Go. Keep on the right, keep on the right, keep on the right, keep on the right, on the right, on the right, Elisa, on the right. Oh my gosh, I said right, Elisa. Let's try again. Okay, go. Let's go for a ride. Keep on the right. Okay, Elisa, once more. Let's try again that ride. It's getting tough, isn't it? Go, keep on the right, keep on the right. Elisa, right, Elisa, right, Elisa, right, right, right. Oh. Please, listen to your father. You need to hear me, okay? You need to listen to your father. Go for a ride. Go. Keep it right. Yes, keep it right. That's it. Keep it right. Well done. Good, good. Right. Left, left. Good, that's it. Keep going, keep going on the right. Keep on the right. You are doing very well. Well done, Elisa. You just listened to your father. And what happened? I did not. Sorry? I did not. You succeed. That's it. So, as you could see, our guinea pig, actually my daughter, had some troubles riding the bike. And why that happened? That happened because she could not trust something limited her trust in the father, myself. And that's why she got the consequence. The consequence to trust herself and her limited experiences. We should trust the father because the father has plenty of experience, actually the plenty visibility of our life and is completely owner of our life. So why not trust the one that is pure to love, someone that really care about us? For sure, trust leads to obedience. When we listen to the father, we, we trust the father and then we start to follow the step of, of Christ. And that is where God is really happy with, with our, our, our behavior. So just like the, the music say, you are good, good father. Actually, it's not a just, it's not only good, it's a perfect father. And as a perfect father, God wants the best for us. So trust in someone that has the plan of love it's just essential and the most wise thing that you could do is trust and obey God. And don't worry, uh, Elisa is absolutely a good actress and all the accident was just simulated and she is very well, very well. nothing, nothing wrong with her. Yeah, just, just praise my, my daughter, she is a very good actress. Thank you, Faye. Maybe you can uh, come back and finish the service when I'm playing the drums at the end and do the closing prayer. That'd be good. Yeah. Good morning, all. It is good to be here. We are working through Mark's gospel still, and we're up to chapter 15. Last week, we just looked at one verse, and this week, we're going to look at a bit more. So I'm going to read the first 20 verses of John chapter 15 and it'll be helpful if you've got a Bible or you've got a device with the Bible on it to, uh, to follow that. So Mark 15 from verse 1. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders 
the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they're accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now, it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who'd committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they'd mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Let's just be quiet for a moment as we think of those words. And oh, we've got the first slide up there. That's brilliant. So uh, the story starts early in the morning. The chief priests and the teachers, they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to be crucified. Uh, De Agostinini is the, uh, the, the painting of that. It's good to see the, uh, the leaders, the teachers of the law and the chief priests in the background. Even still, they're plotting what they're going to do. But those, those words kind of get reflected later in the, in the passage. So we, we've got in verse 1, they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over. Uh, the commentators say that, uh, that the, the sense is he's being delivered over unto death. At the end of the, uh, the Pilate stage, we're told again in verse 15, that Pilate handed him over to be crucified. And then in 16, the soldiers led him away. And finally, in verse 20, they led him out to crucify him. So the same sets of words are used to just demark the different stages. So right at the start, we then got the two passages with Pilate. We then led out and handed over again. We've got the passage with the soldiers. And then he's led out one final time. So we're going to look at those three, uh, three chunks. Uh, just so you know where we're going, we're going to look at the first chunk uh, with Jesus and Pilate. We're then going to look at the second chunk with Pilate and the crowd and Barabbas. Then the third chunk with the soldiers. And then we're going to come back to Barabbas because there's something that I'm going to miss out deliberately and come back to it because it's a quite important bit in there. 
So Jesus uh, was questioned by Pilate. We went into the King of the Jews bit last week, so I'm not going to cover that anymore. But after that point, we're told there's lots of accusations and Jesus was quiet. He didn't answer them. And um, Mark wants us uh, from this point on to kind of have one finger in Isaiah chapter 53. I don't know how familiar you are with Isaiah. Um, Isaiah the prophet Weaving in and out of his, his prophecies are four songs about the servant of Israel. They're called the servant songs. And the fourth of them is in Isaiah 53. At the time, at the time, the leaders most likely thought that the servant of Israel was actually Israel itself. But as we get into Jesus' ministry... Uh, it becomes more apparent to those who are listening that the servant in the songs is actually Jesus. And so in Isaiah 53, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open its mouth. It's almost a step-by-step -step commentary on what's going on at this point. And this was written by Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, uh, verse 7, hundreds of years earlier. And that's all I'm going to say about the first chunk. Let's look at the, uh, the second chunk now. So uh, uh, here's a, a famous painting uh, by Bosch. And this one is called Ecce Homo. Uh, that's Latin. It uh, means behold the man, or here is the man. And it portrays Pilate, uh, top left-hand corner, with Jesus. Uh, if, if you're looking really closely, you might say, why has, why has he got a robe and a crown of thorns on? And that's because uh, the painting was based on John's account, which has things in a slightly different order, because John wants to emphasise different things. So uh, in John's Gospel, uh, Jesus has been beaten and mocked before being displayed. But, the, but Pilate says, what shall I do with the one you call the King of the Jews? And we note that that phrase appears several times. And we're not quite sure what's going on in the minds of the crowd there. I mean, is it possible that some of them were disappointed with Jesus? Because Jesus hadn't raised a rebellion to try and kick the, the Romans out. Barabbas had. Maybe Barabbas was more the type of Messiah they wanted and not Jesus, because he did go after the Romans. Maybe some of them were scared of the chief priests. And the chief priest has said, this guy's got to die and the other one's got to be released. We don't know. Probably that's partly true and some where. But we don't know the, ultimately the reason why they called for Barabbas to be released and Jesus to be put to death. Other than we know it kind of had to happen because Jesus had said earlier, the Son of Man, there is in Mark 10, the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Well, we haven't got to the rising bit yet, but the mocking and spitting we've seen. We just read about that. So in the third chunk, that's what happens. They, they put on a crown of thorn on his head. I thought I'd put Caesar next to him with his laurel wreath. And see, it's a little bit like him. They've made Jesus look a little bit like Caesar. They put their headgear on, they put the robe on, they worship him, they strike him before being handed over to be crucified. And at that point, you think, well, is Jesus suffering almost complete? Well, more of that next week, but certainly his rejection by the world. Judas had betrayed him. The disciples had fled. Peter had denied he even knew him. The chief priests and the teachers had falsely accused him, had condemned him to death. Pilate had stood aside and let all this happen. The crowd had called for his execution and the soldiers had mocked him. The whole, the whole of the story, all of the actors in the story are playing their part 
in rejecting Jesus. We can go back to Isaiah 53. He was despised and rejected by mankind. All of them. All of them. A man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised. And we held him in low esteem. What I like about, well, I like everything about this Isaiah passage. But one of the things in there is it takes responsibility. We held him in low esteem. It's something that we did. It's not something that other people do. We're not going to blame someone else for what's going on. I wonder, I wonder if we were there at the time, who would we be like? Where would we be? And uh, interestingly, if we go back to the uh, Ekihomi, the, uh, uh, the painting, if you were really watching early, you'd see that there were some Latin words in there. So at the top, it actually says Ekihomi. These are like talk bubbles, you know, 16th century talk bubbles. And the painter put in Ekihomi at the top there. Here is the man. That's, that's Pilate's words. And then you've got the crowd, uh, and they're saying, Crucifigi eum, crucify him. And in the bottom left-hand corner, it's a little bit, uh, it's interesting that the, the, the people who paid the, uh, the artist initially asked, them, asked him to paint them in, which he did in the bottom corner. And then later on, somebody said that shouldn't be there and painted over it. And this is the restored version, so you can see the ghosts. So those people down there, that's like the ghosts of the people who paid for this. And alongside them, it says, Salve nos Christe Redemptor, uh, save us. Christ the Redeemer. And so the people who paid for this painting, what they're saying is, if we were there on the day, we would be there and you'd see us in the crowd and we would be proclaiming that Christ is the Messiah. We would be evangelizing the crowd. That's what we'd be doing. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> no, they wouldn't be evangelizing the crowd. The whole point, the whole point was that everybody Everybody rejected. And that's, I think, why somebody tried to paint these guys out of history. That they have been arrogant enough to say, oh yeah, we'll be there. We will be evangelizing. We will put our lives at risk and be saved by Christ the Redeemer. No, you won't. Because Peter himself, didn't he? He said, actually, if everybody else, if the whole world ran away, I would still be there following you. I'm going to follow you till I die. And, uh, and no... He didn't. He didn't. It's interesting how some of the, uh, the hymns uh, look at this. I mean, I love My Song is Love Unknown uh, by uh, Crossman, but look, look at these words. Sometimes they strew his way, and his strong praises sing. Resounding all the day, hosannas to the king. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. They rise and needs may have. My dear Lord made a way, a murderer they save. The prince of life, they slay. This is all pointing the finger at somebody else and saying, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. But he was despised and rejected by mankind. All of us. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. We are responsible. We are accountable. Um, Here's another song from Stuart Townend's How Deep the Father's Love. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. If you go to Stuart Townend's website, he comments on that when he was writing it. I've been meditating on the cross and in particular what it cost the father to give up his beloved son to a torturous death on the cross. And what was my part in it? Not only was it my sin that put him there, but if I'd lived at the time, I would have probably been in the crowd, shouting with everyone else, crucify him. Makes his sacrifice all the more personal, all the more amazing, and all the more humbling. There are, there are some churches that uh, when, they, when they gather on Good Friday, as part of their liturgy, the congregation shouts out, crucify him. Uh, just to really rub it in to say, well, actually, we are, we are responsible. And there are some who don't join into that because it's hard to take. 
But the answer is, if we were there, we wouldn't be evangelizing the crowd. We would be scared. We would be, we'd be running away. We'd be denying him. Because the whole of mankind rejected Jesus. I want to come back to Barabbas. Now, Barabbas is, a, is an interesting character. We don't, we don't meet him anywhere else. We just meet him in, in these verses and the equivalent in the other, the other Gospels. Uh, what do we know about him? Well, he's, he was part of a, an uprising, part of committing murder. So he deserves to be where he was. And his name is Barabbas. Now, I don't know how, how closely you have been following Mark's Gospel, uh, up until this point. Uh, but Mark actually does teach us a little bit of Aramaic. He teaches us two words of Aramaic. Uh, and, and, and this is... Well, oops, sorry, let's uh, we'll jump back to that in a minute. He teaches two words of Aramaic. One is Bar and the other is Abba. And Barabbas is literally Bar Abba. And he teaches us in Mark chapter 10 that Bar means son of, because he talks of Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus. He teaches in 1436, Abba Father. Abba means father. So Bartimaeus' name is son of the father. And you think, well, well actually, every, every male child is son of the father, and every female child is daughter of the... You know, we're all, we're all child of our physical, earthly parents. But that was his name, son of the father. Or was it? <laughs> it, we're, told, we're told in the text, technically it says, a man called Barabbas. So it may be that they, just, they called him that. It wasn't real. We don't know. We don't know. It's simply that's what he's given to us, Barabbas. And he could be anyone. He could be absolutely anyone. Again, think, who are going to release? Well, anyone but Jesus. Anyone but Jesus. And there's a, there's a kind of emphasis in throughout the passage that... Jesus is bound and led away and handed over. He's led away and handed over and mocked and bound and led away and handed over. And Barabbas is released. And the two are matched against each other. We've got Jesus bound, handed over, Barabbas released. It's almost as if, it's almost as if he's in his place. The, uh, the great painting we've looked at earlier, there's actually three versions of it. So uh, in, in, um, in Frankfurt, you can see the original we had earlier. The copy was done before it was cleaned up. So the copy uh, is the, the one, main one there with the uh, uh, nobody in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's in, uh, that's in Boston. And if you buy the jigsaw of it, whoever made the jigsaw thought, well, there's a bit of blank space there, and they've put this bit here, sorry for the cameras, they've put this bit, that's sitting on there on the jigsaw. I haven't got a great picture of that, but that's, uh, that's like a prison cell with some bars on it, and behind the bars is Barabbas. And there he is, Barabbas is behind the bars, deserves to be there, because he has committed a crime. Jesus is on the top who doesn't deserve, and Jesus is going to be handed over to death. Literally, literally in the place of Barabbas. Because Barabbas should have been handed over to those uh, soldiers. Barabbas should have been the one on the cross. And what a great picture of that, isn't it? It's, it's God demonstrates his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us, in our place, in our place. Think about Isaiah 53. Again, if you've got Isaiah 53, and uh, if you've got a finger in there, I'm going to read verses 4 to 6. Surely, Isaiah says, he took up our pain and bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Punishment that brought us peace was on him. By his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep had gone astray. Each of us had turned to his own way, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He died physically 
in the place of Barabbas, son of the father, a child of his parents. He died spiritually in our place for our sins. It was our sin that held him there. And, and in accepting that he died for our sins in our place, us, a child of our earthly parent, become, become freed as Brabus was freed from that prison cell and become sons and daughters, children of our heavenly father. We're freed and translated from sinners who will pay the penalty to forgiven sinners, to children, to sons and daughters of our heavenly father. Bob Corflin's line's great. In, in my place, condemned he stood. Hallelujah. What a saviour. We're not going to sing any of those songs that I've, uh, I've quoted. <laughs> uh, maybe one of those or two of those next week, because next week we're going to be looking at the cross in more detail. But today we're just going to we're picturing there, as the passage closes, it's just that picture there. Let's shut our eyes and we'll, let's just picture Jesus is there in our place. Jesus has been rejected by all. And we're not blaming others for that because we too are guilty. We too are culpable. We too are responsible. We deserve, as Barabbas did, Son of the Father, deserve punishment. But as Jesus stands in our place and dies in our place, he sets us free to tell his story. He sets us free to be his people, to be sons, daughters of our heavenly father. And Jesus says that's what he's made us. That is what he has made us. Children, children of God. As we continue to meditate on our saviour. We picture ourselves as children of God, because that's what Jesus says we are. And we prepare to take our place in the world where we do his work. Let's sing those words, shall we? I am a child of God, and then fail, finish off. <laughs>